This week, students discuss their New Year's resolutions. Two swimmers commit to Nebraska Wesleyan University. We explore a student's wood burning art. And a recap of Millard West basketball, all here on the MWHS Wildcat News. Good morning, Wildcats. I'm Edison Geiler. And I'm Jenna Reynolds. First up, news from Washington, D.C. After the insurrection that took place in the Capitol building on January 6th and a looming second impeachment trial for former President Donald Trump, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were sworn in on Wednesday, marking the start of the 46th president's first term. Just some of the things Biden has planned for his first 100 days is to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, initiate the Build Back Better economic plan, and push for a $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package. With the Democratic Party controlling both houses of Congress, it is likely Biden will be able to follow through on most of his plans for the new year. And as 2021 began just over three weeks ago, students are following through with their New Year's resolutions. Whether trying to improve physical and mental health or continuing to find more activities to do during the pandemic, they're working on bettering themselves for the coming 12 months. Some are working out more, some are going vegetarian, and in some cases, some are cutting back on excessive nap time. Here's Emma Baker and Maddie Christensen. Every year, more than 50% of Americans tackle the new year with a resolution. Millard West students are no exception. Some Wildcats, like Senior Golden Kelly, are putting their goals on paper. My New Year's resolution for 2021 would definitely be to journal more, to keep a more mindful lifestyle going. Um, I think that keeping a gratitude journal in 2021 will really help me keep up my positive vibes. Usually when I think of journaling, I associate like 20 minutes with it, just for like a time amount. But I think that keeping just like five minutes of time to journal each day will really help me be more mindful. Other students are staying active and becoming more conscious about their dietary choices to make a positive impact on their mental and physical health. I'm trying to work out at least 10 minutes every day. I decided that I really wanted to focus on my mental health this year and I know that how much working out helps with um, dopamine levels and so I thought it'd be a great way to try and help during a crazy pandemic. New Year's resolution is to drink less caffeine. I think it'll be better to not rely on caffeine, to not be tired for school, and like to be healthier and have less sugar. I feel like I just don't get enough sleep per night, so I take naps after school, and it kind of distracts me from doing all the other things I want to do. So I feel like if I get enough sleep per night, no naps, equals success. So my New Year's resolution for this year is that I'm going vegetarian for the month of January. <laughs> it's definitely hard because my parents like they use me every night when like we make dinner and so I kind of just have to like make up my own stuff and be creative with what I can eat and it hasn't been that bad but it's opened my eyes to like new ways of like trying things. Many students also hope to participate in activities that were taken for granted before the pandemic. My New Year's resolution is to travel more, to get out of Nebraska, go see some of the world. Obviously the coronavirus is still uh, a thing, so protecting myself, being safe is going to be a big issue. It's important for me because last year with the virus in effect, I didn't really get to leave Omaha, so um, those experiences really help build your character and I think that's important. We wish all Wildcats good luck in achieving their resolutions. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Emma Baker and Madeline Christensen. The book club is sponsoring a book drive until January 27th, Wednesday next week. Students may drop off any books they are willing to part with in a box just inside the library doors. All donated books will be used to stock a free little library, a public bookcase for neighborhoods to exchange books without having to go to a library building. Anna Blumenthal and I will have more coverage next week, but for now, we'll switch over to the swimming team to check on two recent college commits. Senior swimmers Dylan Fusick and Tanner Klan announced their commitments to Nebraska Wesleyan University in December. Not only were NWU swimming and academic programs ideal fits, but also their familiarity with each other pushed them to commit to the same school. Miguel Perez Reyes and Tenley Wright talked with them about their decision to swim as Prairie Wolves. 
For many high school athletes, committing to a college can be a lengthy and stressful process. Taking such a big step towards the future can be nerve-wracking, but for senior swimmers Dylan Fusick and Tanner Klain, being able to go through that process with a friend made it all the more easier. I committed first. I committed on a, a Saturday. Um, I guess it was easiest because I didn't have school or uh, you know swimming or anything to worry about so it was the best day that, for me and for Coach Hunt and then he committed the Wednesday after I did. Wednesday wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Obviously we're friends so you know if I can know somebody before I go there that would be preferable and eventually I just decided that it was probably the easily my best choice out of my options. During the recruitment process Fusick encouraged Klain to commit to Westland in hopes that they would take on their introduction to college athletics together. Well, I, I think it's awesome. It, both of them are well-deserving to go to a good school. And the fact that they want to continue to swim and they still already have a buddy as they go into it is, is even better. It's, it's hard enough going to college, let alone athletics in college, but to know somebody and have somebody there to walk along with you is even better. Both athletes were confident their commitment would land with Westland, but making the final decision was an exciting moment for everyone involved. I'm really excited um, watching these two kind of grow up through high school together, being such good friends and uh, kind of pushing each other in the pool even though they don't swim the same events. Uh, you know, it's, it's super special when you can go ahead and, uh, and go to college and, and not only share that experience with a great friend, but then, you know, take that into, uh, into the athletics. Uh, I, I couldn't have been more excited about it. I'm the same way. I'm very excited that the, the two of them, is, they're, they're such great friends. They, they, they do a lot of things together. They hang out together. Uh, I think it's great that the two of them are, are going to school together. And like, and like he said, it just them uh, competing against each other and, and pushing each other in the pool. Fusick and Clan have known each other for several years and look to continue their friendship throughout college. So we've been swimming together since, what, 7th seventh, seventh grade? Uh, I think we were friends before that even, so in 6th grade we, we became, like we started our friendship, yeah. so we didn't really know each other until middle school, but ever since then, you know, it's, uh, it's been a pretty strong friendship since, so. We wish these seniors the best of luck in their future endeavors at Wesleyan. This has been Miguel Paredes Reyes and Tenley Wright with the MWHS Wildcat News. And speaking of committing to college, athletes will be participating in another round of Letter of Intent signing February 3rd before school. However, any athletes wanting to announce their commitments must notify Ms. Chastain before next Friday, January 29th. If you are an athlete wanting to announce your commitment, make sure to visit her in the activities office before then. And coming from the other side of the school in the Green Mile, most art students draw or paint on pieces of paper. But for Z Conti, a wood canvas is much more desirable. After a trip to Comic Con exposed him to wood burning art, he's been creating pieces ever since, most recently in his studio art class. Here's Jordan McCarr with the story. Students at Miller West usually find various ways to pass recreational time that they may have. But for senior Zachary Conti, he spends his time creating all sorts of woodworking arts. The first time I saw someone do something on wood art was when I went to Comic Con. I think I was in middle school and I saw one booth had a bunch of wood that they did painting and burning on for like superheroes and other stuff. And I thought it looked fun to try it. Last semester, Zach was a part of studio art class. He and a few other students decided to experiment and create woodworking pieces of art. What we did was wood burning. Um, that's something that I just picked up as my own hobby outside of the class just because there isn't really an outlet for that here at West, but that class was really helpful because we had the freedom to use whatever medium we want. There were people who did like plaster and wood and painting and pencils and all sorts of stuff. The process of starting and completing a new piece of artwork can be challenging. It usually depends on the overall style and details that Zach wants to incorporate into his piece of art. I pretty much use my wood burning tool and the engraving tool just like a pencil would. It's very similar to shading with like a regular pencil, so I guess just from regular art classes. Zach has participated in many art classes from a young age, which has helped him establish and diversify many of his fundamental skills. Learning the creative problem solving um, and also just working through perseverance of you know, when you hit a wall, something maybe isn't turning out how you want it to turn out, um, figuring out how you can make those corrections or change it so that it's a, an end result that you want. Um, and I think that can translate into just about any kind of career. Having the patience and the tolerance to spend a lot of time on each individual piece of art is very crucial. One of my jewelry boxes I've done would somehow take between three and 
I don't know, maybe 10 hours. And one of my longest projects was somewhere in 20 hours. Zach is very optimistic about what the future holds in store for woodworking. He has plans of creating more original pieces of art as his hobby and his side business. There's never gonna like not be a shortage in things you can do with wood. So in the future I plan to do like things like tables or benches or chairs or bookcases, anything that's made out of wood that I can use art on. This has been Jordan Bacar with the MWHS Wildcat News. The boys basketball team will face off against Millard South next Friday for the 5th annual Hoops for Hope event. Millard West will be hosting this year and 50 students will be able to attend the game. Junior and senior class board have been raising money by selling different color shirts representing types of cancers. All money will be donated to the American Cancer Society. Speaking of basketball, the boys team is 9-3 and the girls team is 3-9. Both teams squared off against the Elkhorn South Storm earlier in the year on January 7th, and here to report is Evan Vaslow. On January 7th, the Millard West girls and boys basketball teams hosted Elkhorn South. The girls game was first, and the first half was a back and forth battle with both teams stringing together some strong runs. The momentum swung back and forth, and the half ended with the Storm leading 22-18. to Laney Shipper um, got some real early buckets that kind of got us going. Um, defensively, we were doing the things that we wanted to do and, and we rebounded well. The Storm came out strong in the third quarter, giving themselves a substantial lead. Down by 14 going into the fourth quarter, the Wildcats were able to put up 14 points. Laney Shipper led the Wildcats efforts with 11 points and 4 rebounds, but it wasn't enough and West ultimately ended up falling short and dropping to 1-8 and eight on the season. Following the girls game, the 6-2 Millard West boys took the court against the 3-5 Elkhorn South boys. As expected, the Wildcats controlled momentum from the tip-off. Despite only shooting 25% from beyond the arc and turning the ball over 7 times, the Wildcats defense kept them in the game and in the lead. Defense has kind of been our kind of our, our, our foundation this year, and, and the team is really doing a good job of playing team defense. The Wildcats went into halftime with a commanding 29-21 to lead. The second half of the game saw a lot of the same, with Millard West scoring 27 more points and finishing with a convincing 56-38 to victory. James Conway led the Cats with 22 points and 12 rebounds. Improving to 7-2 and on the season, the Wildcats solidified their place in the NSAA top 10 rankings. Their schedule has been easy thus far and will only get more difficult, but if they keep up their strong defense and improve their three-point shooting, they will have success. This has been Evan Vaslow for the MWHS Wildcat News. As you're signing up for classes for next year, make sure to put down journalism classes. If you haven't taken intro to journalism, you need to take it before other classes. But if you already have, we encourage you to join a publication. You can join our newspaper and broadcast staff by taking advanced journalism or broadcast journalism and join our yearbook staff by taking yearbook. And that's all for this week, Wildcats. Make sure to follow us on our social media, check out our website, and watch our previous broadcasts. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Jenna Reynolds and Edison Geiler. We'll see you next week.